as you know, a few months ago, I met Miss Martha, and I just thought that it was going to be a different occupation change, um, just a new job and everything like that, but actually I was receiving much more, and I didn't even realize it. I would come over, and in the mornings, her and Caleb, looking right at the camera, <laughs> her and Caleb, they would be doing Bible study, and at that time, I didn't realize that it was touching me and actually affecting me. And so, after a while, I start feeling like, maybe you need to give your life over to the Lord. Maybe it's time for a change. And then a part of me was like, no, it's just you're coming over here every day. And I tried to fight against it. And the more I would come and they would be doing Bible study, it became interesting. It was just like I was reading a book. It wasn't very old and boring. It was just like exciting and new. And it was weird because I've heard all these Bible stories all my life, but they were actually like jumping out at me. So um, I was just led to give my life over to the Lord and to make some changes. I was just to a point in my life where I was just tired. I was tired of being the same Farah. I was tired of doing the same things. I was tired of not getting results in life. And I just had to really figure out that life is not possible or anything's not possible without God. Not only that, I've had the Lord just show me different scriptures in the Bible to comfort me, to make me feel better. Uh, he, he's just he's just changing me and I can't even explain how he makes me feel. Even when I'm reading the Bible, sometimes I'll read the Bible and I'll just have like these out-of-body experiences. I lost a good friend during my change too um, and nothing happened to her. It's just she didn't fully understand my transition and because I, everything is so new to me, I felt like I wasn't strong enough to carry her with me. And I wasn't strong enough to fight my battle and her battle. So the only thing I could do was walk away from her. And that was hard, but I can't refuse God or Jesus because of a friend. That's not a friend. If you're my friend, you'll support me and whatever I decide to do. So that was a big transition. Me deciding to stop doing the things that I, were do I was doing before, um, hanging out, partying and all that, big transition. But I can't explain to you how God started to fill that gap, that, I, that void I felt like I needed. And um, I hate to get emotional because it's just, it's amazing the things that he's doing for me. It is just, I didn't know. So I'm just like so excited. I'm not going to tell a lie. I'm very <laughs> nervous about being baptized today. And I feel like the devil tried to play with me by messing with my car this morning. But I'm here and I'm just like taking deep breaths. I'm, I'm just going to be so happy when we get to that point where we're in the pool and I go back in the water and come back up. In my crazy head, I feel like I'm not going to come back up. But I know God won't allow that. So that's why I'm here right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Epiphany means manifestation. During the season of Epiphany, we remember the baptism of Jesus. We, we did not plan that. God did. God planned the day for your baptism. God knew it when you were conceived, even before you were conceived in your mother's womb, that He would call you and that you would respond and that you would be discipled, and that you, in obedience to fulfill the righteousness of God, would be baptized on January 6, 2013, as a sign of the manifestation of the risen Lord Jesus.
Vera has given her life to Jesus. And as an act of obedience to fulfill the righteousness of God, she will be baptized this day. And Farah, I ask you, do you repent of your sins? Yes. Will you walk in the path that leads to eternal life through Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I'll ask you, each of you, will you so live that you will that you will support Pharaoh as she lives as a disciple of Christ? Will you remember your baptism today and be thankful?